After many years of owning a Logitech G25 and G29, I recently upgraded to a Fanatec CSL Elite wheelbase and a Formula wheel, along with some Club Sport V3 pedals. It was quite a jump, and with that, I want to help all current Logitech G Series wheel owners figure out whether making a similar move is going to be worth the cost. For the purposes of this recap, I have exclusively used iRacing. Let's get to the point and analyse your motives first, as they are probably the biggest indicator of whether you will get what you want out of such an upgrade over your current Logitech G Series wheel. If you want to get faster because you're regularly languishing at the bottom half of the practice times and you just can't find that extra speed, then your results are going to vary. A friend of mine with less experience in iRacing upgraded from a G29 to the same setup that I've got now, a CSL Elite wheel base and Club Sport V3 pedals essentially mirroring what I've done and there was no doubt that his times were improved by the upgrade and he was just as pleased with the quality as I was. The key thing to note here is that you'll still need practice and coaching to bridge the gap so if you aren't yet competing for wins in your split then upgrading to a CSL Elite won't be the silver bullet. Instead try signing up to the virtual racing school and start to compare your lap data to the fast guys and lay your own habits and ability on the table. By comparing your lap telemetry with a proven benchmark time, it will show you in detail why you're losing time. Furthermore, although I've not tried it myself yet, there is one-to-one -one driver coaching available too. And let me tell you, nothing breaks bad habits like getting some personal feedback. If you are an unhoned driver, subscribing to VRS alone will bag you more lap time than an equipment upgrade ever could, for a lot less money. When I returned to iRacing recently and saw a vast gap of up to 2 seconds between the best times and my own, I knew there was something important I was missing. Try as I might, no amount of tweaking the car would help me bridge the gap. So I started using VRS setups and the lap times instantly improved without any real modification to my driving. It is just a fact of life that the fastest guys will know the tricks of the trade that work best with the current variables on offer in the sim. And if you're like me and you can't keep up with the optimal car setups, just having a download of the setup is a huge help. VRS and Pure Driving Schools are both competitors in the setup and driver coaching game, but I've only personally ever tried VRS. Once you are punching really good lap times in practice and qualifying, and can keep a car on track reliably over race distance, only then can you honestly say that an equipment upgrade will assist you further alone. If you're already a very fast driver that's regularly in the hunt to win races and place highly in practice and qualifying but tend to be weaker over a full race distance, then you'll get more out of the ability bar grading. Since swapping to this wheel from a G29, I can confidently say that it's much easier to feel the limits of the car in certain situations. When you're setting a legitimately fast pace, then the limit is where you spend most of your time, so being able to feel that more easily makes a noticeable difference over a full 40 minute race distance. The CSL Elite, which is the entry level wheelbase from Fantec, has far more fidelity in its feedback than the G29, as good as it was, was able to provide. I felt some distinct improvements in confidence in certain situations. Exit in slow corners, for example, gives you a much better sense of weight transfer towards the outside of a car and those slow corners such as the last chicane at Spa or the hairpin of the Donington International feel far less vague. Oftentimes during a long fast corner the G29's notchiness makes itself known and it feels like you have to adjust your cornering in set increments and people who've used G29's for a long time you know what I mean by that. But due to the belt drive system in the CSL Elite, there is nothing but silky smooth rotation and a clear sense of weight transfer transmitted back to you through the wheel. There is no doubt that if you are contending with the sharp end of the grid, that an upgrade will help you over race distance. And really that's what matters the most when you're looking for competitiveness. There is a third, often overlooked reason to upgrade from a G29 to a Fanatec, and yet it is the most important of all, fun. There is no argument. Regardless of your ability, if you're looking to make your sim racing more fun and immersive, then the package will deliver 100%. I was so preoccupied with the hope of better race pace and competitiveness that the unexpected fun factor took me completely by surprise and swept it all aside. 
My choice of steering wheel style was inspired by all of those GT cars I love with the ultra focused cockpit controls that would help me pretend just a little bit more than I was driving the real thing. There is no doubt that the descent of Mount Panorama or the chicanes at the end of Le Mans have become a much more electrifying sequence of events than they would be with the G29. If I am faster with the CSL Elite, it's hard to tell at times, but if I'm having more fun, it's definitely evident. I've wistfully viewed hours and hours of onboard footage of my favourite GT cars, wishing that somehow I could experience it for myself. Sorry. And if you're anything like me, then upgrading your G29 to a Fanatec will bring you many steps closer to having a slice of that imagined feeling at home. So what about the pedals? Well, I've got to admit, I did buy the Club Sport V3 pedals weeks before the wheelbase, whilst I still had my G29. So at my feet, I had a premium product with all the trimmings, and in my hands I still had my humble Logitech wheel. Even still, the pedals alone gave me much more of that real car feeling that helps you transport yourself into the car you're pretending to drive. After many years of sim racing in socks, suddenly I find myself needing a basic set of driving shoes to actually get the best out of my foot controls. And although the excitement factor of new pedals is not quite as dramatic as a steering wheel upgrade, as a control device the V3 pedals are on another level and to be admired for the design, if nothing else. However, the CSL Elite pedals are full metal construction too and are included in CSL Elite bundles from the Fanatec site as an entry level pedal set. You might have noticed that I don't have a rig. That's not been an obstacle. The CSL Elite's desk clamp is mighty strong, yet still perfectly portable and can slide away when play switches back to work. The G29 pedals had a stable base built to be freestanding, but the club sports were troublesome without my homemade solution that you can see here. Fanatec rightly assumes that most people buying club sports will have a rig to bolt them to. If that's not really an option for you, then you can emulate what I've done here to keep the pedals stable, yet they can slide right out of the way when you're done. If you use a normal office chair with casters, like me, buy yourself a set of stumps off Amazon or something to replace them to make your chair stay put. This does the trick exceptionally well and for all intents and purposes I don't experience any problems sliding around or compromising the force I put through the pedals at all and that can be key in feeling your brakes. Taking into consideration all that I've said, let's recap. If you're slow, replacing your G29 with a Fanatec will help you, but it won't be a silver bullet. And there are effective ways to get quicker sticking with your G29 and not spending quite so much money, like coaching and advice, or signing up to VRS, Virtual Racing School, or Pure Driving School. If you're already a pretty good sim racer and you feel like you've overgrown your G29, a Fanatec will definitely further galvanise your abilities. But in all cases, fast or slow, upgrading your G29 to a Fanatec will add a remarkable new dimension to your controls, giving you far more fun and immersion in almost all aspects, and that can't be argued with. Finally, it's worth mentioning that Thrustmaster are another competitor in town offering belt-driven sim racing wheels. Strangely enough, it was actually sampling a Thrustmaster TSPC at Autosport International that sowed the seed that maybe I could leave a G29 for, for greener pastures. I doubt that Thrustmaster's intention was to land a sale for Fanatec, but that's just how things go. Thanks for watching. Please help me grow the channel by subscribing as there will be more from me in future. And if you are a G29 to Fanatec uh, upgrade E and you've already been through this, leave a comment describing your own experience to others who are still on the G29 wheel and I think you can make the same move. Thank you very much.